YouTube gaming, um, or YouTube actually released through their blog um, data on views, um, viewership for gaming related videos. And uh, in 2020, they garnered 100 billion watch time hours, uh, which is a new record for them. Um, so this is the big, biggest year they've ever had. Um, there's 40 million active gaming channels, Trey, right now on YouTube. Um, 100 billion hours of content have been watched. Some other fascinating stats that they shared to throw out there is that 80,000 YouTube gaming content creators hit 100,000 subscribers in 2020. Mm -hmm. Over 1,000 content creators hit 5 million subscribers, and they had over 350 gaming content creators that have hit 10 million subscribers. The most watched overall games were Minecraft at 201 billion, Roblox at 75 billion, um, Garena Free Fire, which I have never heard of, at 72 billion, Grand Theft Auto V at 70 billion, and Fortnite at 67 billion. There's no doubt the increased viewership was fueled quite a bit by the pandemic, but you see this trend continuing in 2021 and beyond for content creators, and really is there a hunger out there to continue to consume this type of content? I think there's a lot of new people that got into it uh, this year for whatever reason, right? Look at us sitting right here. Um, so so I think the pandemic pandemic has created more time for people, even if they're working from home, it's less time commuting, or you know, most people don't have a job where they have to be dialed in eight hours a day. So I, I think both, I think it's it, that that's allowed viewership to go up, but also it's it's made people think, well, if I, you know, why don't, why don't I, why not me? Why don't I do some content creation? I like to play video games. And um, when we started talking about this, um, about about launching a channel, you know, we were talking about, well, let's let's do, let's get on Twitch, right? And I think for, for myself, I quickly realized um, that it's really tough. Like you have to either be a professional video game player or, uh, you know, ha have a following that you've already built, but just getting on there and, and starting a Twitch account and, and streaming, people aren't going to just come and see you unless you, unless you're either, you know, again, have that built in follow, built up followership or you're one of the best in the world. So it's like tuning in to watch, watching, you know, a professional sports um, game. Um, I think it's great. You know, we always talked about, you know, we were born, you know, maybe 20 or 20 years too, too early, um, you know, to where now video games are so mainstream. So to me, anything that, that, that helps the industry, we saw that G4 is coming back hopefully sooner than later at some point. That's something that I really enjoyed, but there's just, there's so much more that people are willing um, to, uh, to, to log on and to look at. Now I was surprised by those top games and we were kind of talking about this in, in the pre-show, you know, first of all, that, that Warzone isn't in there, um, that Grand Theft Auto V still is in there. Um, and I kind of saw a joke about Grand, Grand Theft Auto V where, you know, Rockstar will take 10 years to make a game, but they'll sell it for three generations. So kudos to them, kudos to making a solid game. That, that game is, that game's fantastic. But, you know, Roblox, like you talked about, and some of the other ones, uh, Minecraft, I'm not surprised. Um, but then you also look at, you know, th those couple and even Fortnite to some extent, those are driven by a younger demographic. Yeah. So kids, there, there was a video um, that my granddaughter was watching, uh, the Baby Shark video, right? Do, 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 do Baby Shark. And, and, and uh, her mom was like, yeah, it has like 10 billion views. And I'm like, I'm assuming you mean million. No, 10 billion. Like the kids will just sit there and watch it on, on a loop all day. So um, I, I think that they're, they're, kids, are, kids are growing up. Um, kids are growing up playing video games. They're playing it into their 20s, into their 30s. Um, and, and again, going back to the generation after us and then the generation after them, as everybody gets older, they were even more and more raised in the video game world, right? We were raised in the Nintendo, even, you know, you a little bit before me with, with an Atari and things like that. But, you know, these kids grew up playing like an Xbox 360, right? Like my son grew up playing a PlayStation 2. That was his first video game system. So um, I think it's more ingrained in them. And as, those, as that, as that uh, age bracket gets older, it's just going to be more and more and the ones below them will we'll have more as well. I think one of the things that's interesting too, and I know that there was some uh, professional players like Ninja talking recently about this. They really feel like that gaming versus the music industry has embraced content creators. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot fewer restrictions 
on what they can do. And I think that's what you're seeing here, right? You're, you're looking at the, the way that Microsoft embraces the community when it comes to Minecraft. Um, the way, you know, whether it be Grand Theft Auto, whether it be Warzone, all these different games, gaming companies recognize the value of embracing content creators and giving them more freedom and the ability to build things because the more people are viewing these things, the more longevity these games have. And I think that that's something that is very cool about the way that the, the gaming community has really come together. So, I mean, to me, I think this is just going to be, it's going to continue. It's going to continue to grow. People are going to get more creative. Um, and so I'm excited about it, obviously for us as well, because I know that we both consume and create content, but I think this is a really good thing for, uh, for everybody. Yeah, I was actually thinking earlier um, about how, you know, with DCMA, and I believe I'm using that acronym correctly, and not being able to use, you know, music, certain music for YouTube, or mm -hmm. uncopyrighted music for YouTube videos, and things like that. And I get it, they want to collect their intellectual property, um, but does it, and I'm sure there's a whole nother discussion, I'm just thinking about it from the surface, but when I hear a song that I like, it makes me pull out my phone, Shazam it, and then I go download it. So I'm sure there's a business reason why the music industry is so protective of that. But I feel, and there was a big thing on Twitch recently where everybody's stuff got DCMA. God, I really hope I'm using that acronym right or I'm gonna get killed. But the, everybody got DCMA'd. So all of their archived clips had to be completely removed and taken down. So it's basically a life's worth of work. When I watch a content creator, and Nick Merckx is one that does this a lot, you know, I'm a big Drake fan. He always plays Drake on his intros while he's playing. And I think now they split it up to where the clips don't contain it or whatever. But I'm like, that makes me like the music more. I go yeah. make sure I have the song downloaded. Um, it also makes me enjoy the stream more. And there was somebody actually on Twitter, it was a developer of a video game that had said, well, I don't understand how come streamers don't have to pay licensing fees to stream the games. And the argument was of the streamers, okay, well maybe we get that, but don't you think more people go and buy your games because they watch yep. you stream it? Yep. But 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 the, but the content creators and the streamers are making money off of that. So um, I, I don't know what, again, there has to be a much, a much deeper reason that I'm just looking at on the surface and I'm just going, why can't we all just use all the content? Because it's gonna, it's gonna make its way back into, more people are gonna purchase it than it's gonna make its way back to the creator's pockets. Yeah, but. you gotta create an ecosystem that makes it sticky. I think, I think part of it too, and, and this will be the last comment that we can kind of close and move on, but I think part of it on the music industry side too is, you know, they still have PTSD back from when, you know, really it was their content that was ripped off first, right? Yep. So in the digital age with Napster, you know, the fight over, over that, over, you know, licensing. So I, I think that they've really, in my opinion, I think a lot of the models that, that they're, le they're using are legacy and they really should think a little bit differently. Um, I think the game developers should continue to embrace what the content creators do. I, again, to your point, creating that community, all that does is generate interest. It, it puts the spotlight on these properties and these games in unique ways that wouldn't have been done otherwise. And it, it generates excitement and interest and engagement and, and people will continue to buy it and you're gonna get to audiences that you didn't even know were there. So hopefully they continue to, uh, to embrace it. Agreed. All right, so uh, let's move to the final story, Trey, which is...